Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Fatima Senkhani. I'm an instructor here at Confidentist. I'm also a prosthodontic instructor at the UFT's Faculty of Dentistry. Today we're going to talk about the AFK exam, some challenges you might face, and at the end I'm going to share some tips on how to best overcome them. So what is the AFK? The AFK stands for Assessment of Fundamental Knowledge. It's the first exam within the equivalency process. It's a multiple choice exam and there's quite a bit to study compared to the other exam. So what are the different ways of becoming a Canadian dentist? Uh, in order to practice general dentistry in Canada, there are two pathways. You can either do the equivalency process, which includes uh, passing the AFK, ACJ, the hands-on, then doing your boards. The other way is to go through university, like programs like the IDAP at U of T. Um, the differences are that, well, hopefully with the exams, you pass everything in the first try, so it's gonna be a shorter process and it's gonna cost you less. Um, if you go through university, usually tuition is a bit more expensive than just doing the exams directly. However, the banks do provide loans, so don't let that scare you. So let's briefly talk about each step. Uh, so the direct pathway includes the AFK, the ACJ, the hands-on exam, and then the boards. Um, you would still do the boards after you're done with university as well. Um, in the direct pathway, like I said, hopefully you would pass everything on the first try. That definitely speeds up everything. Um, you would definitely need to take time off of work if you're working. Um, I wouldn't recommend w working while you're um, studying for these exams, especially a couple of months uh, right before. Uh, once you become licensed in Canada, you're free to practice anywhere in the country. However, you can't use that to practice, let's say, in the States. And that's where um, the, the difference is between the direct pathway and the university pathway. When you study in um, a Canadian university, you will get a degree from a Canadian university at the end, and that allows you to practice, let's say, in the States and in some other countries as well. So if you want to keep your options open or if you're interested in higher education, sometimes that might be the better option. If you're wondering which pathway you should take, no one can really make that decision for you. It's really your decision. You have to look at your own personal circumstances and, and make up your mind. However, I, I think it's perhaps best if you have the option to pursue both. It's always nice to have university as a backup or the direct process as a backup. Let's say when COVID happened, no one knew that was going to happen and it put a lot of people's lives on hold. So it's always best to have a plan A, B, C and D. So in regards to the university, I personally completed the IDAP semester at U of T and now I'm an instructor there, um, so I can only speak for U of T. Um, if you're thinking about university, um, it's definitely a lot more hours of study. It takes a lot more commitment and it's a longer process. Like I said, you will have to take a loan from the bank and that's something you have to pay off later. Some people get intimidated by um, the thought of uh, having debt once they graduate. Um, that's what everyone does, so if they could do it, so can you. I wouldn't be too worried about that. Um, and if you're interested in higher education, going for specialty, that's also something that could work in your favor. If you're interested in moving from Canada or having that option to perhaps one day move to the States or whatnot, then that's also uh, beneficial for you. So what are we providing here at Confidentis for the AFK course? During this course, you're going to have booklets with all the information in it that you have to study. It's just like, imagine just a, a summary of of the textbooks, of all the important parts, let's say orthopathology, they're all in different booklets. Uh, you would come to class, there's an instructor, explains everything to you, they will answer your questions, um, you get a chance to meet other people that are on the same path as you, and you make some friends, uh, you do the mock exams, you get a chance to review those mock exams, and hopefully prepare for, for the actual exam. So what are some of the challenges you might face during the AFK process? I'd say the most common challenge you might face, the one that I faced myself, was that my documents weren't cleared uh, on time for me to register for the exam. So I made it barely in time on the last day of registration and a lot of you uh, are going to experience the same thing. So for that, my recommendation is that you should always have, like I said, a plan B, a plan C and just um, know your ability and know what you're capable of and make a decision based on that. So my advice is not to stress for the AFK exam. This is definitely not an exam you want to stress about because the pathway is clear. If you put in the work, if you commit to the goal, and if you trust your instructors, there's no way that you're not getting results. Like I said before, uh, this is an exam that a lot of people have cleared before you. Uh, you don't need to experiment. You don't need to come up with any innovations. You don't need to figure anything out. It's all been done before. You have an amazing team here at Confidentis that can answer your questions and provide all the support you need. Anything that you're thinking or feeling or experiencing has all been done before by other people before you. 
so don't worry about that. So uh, these are the tips that I have for you guys um, for the AFK. Uh, regardless of whatever it is that you're doing in life, always have a clear goal in mind. Know what you want, know why you want it, and set a deadline for yourself. So obviously nothing is gonna substitute hard work, so make sure you put in the hours, you put in the work. Um, make sure you have a clear plan about what happens if you um, are not able to go for the AFK exactly when you want it so you avoid burnout. Um, my other tip is uh, that I think is the most important thing to do, especially when you join the classes, is to make as many friends as you can. Make friends, form a study group, and study together. I can't stress enough how important it is to study with other people. Everyone brings something to the table. Um, it's the exposure that you get by other people asking questions and going through the material that really helps you. And the other advice that I have is to take the mock exams very seriously. Study hard for them, come for the review sessions, and go over them very carefully. So if uh, passing the exam is your first goal for joining the classes, I'd say a close second is finding good friends and finding your people. Um, I want you to really know how important it is to form friends. The international dentist community in Canada is a very small one. Almost everyone knows someone who knows you. Uh, these are people that you're going to be working with in the future. These are people that you're going to be seeing at seminars and in, in different events. Um, and this is an, an amazing opportunity to find friends, especially if you're new to the country, and just be around like-minded people. And you'd be surprised how that can really catapult you into success in the future. So my tips about the university pathway, I think one thing that's really important to take into consideration is that I'm just one person with one experience. It's important to talk to different people. Do your research on different programs about their length, about their cost, and about the material that they cover. Um, if you're looking into higher education in the future and you're interested in a specific program in a specific university, then that might be a good option for you. The other thing that's really important to take into consideration for a university is that um, communication is very important. Being able to express yourself to someone else and show your worth and show how you would contribute to a team is, is very important. So I hope this session was useful for you guys. I hope that from this you can take away that um, this process is not as scary as you think. If other people have done it, so can you. Um, you have a really good supportive team here at Confidentes. I'm here and everyone here has been through this before, has the answers and can help you. So feel free to contact us with any questions that you have and best of luck with everything. Mm -hmm.